Did you know you can take control of your blood sugar in just 60 seconds a day? All you need is one cup per day to start feeling its benefits. Herbaly tea lets you live more freely because it's full of ingredients that are scientifically proven to lower your blood sugar and improve your overall health. Here are some of the health benefits you can expect from Herbaly. Stable blood sugar levels, reduced sugar cravings, and improved digestion, as well as increased energy levels and a boost to your immune system. Herbaly is jam-packed with a blend of eight natural ingredients, including ginger, turmeric, and lavender petals, to name a few. These herbs have been used and proven in holistic medicine for centuries. But if that's not enough, Herbaly's blend is also nutritionist and dietitian approved with no added sugar or artificial sweeteners. You'll be surprised at how sweet and delicious it tastes. As a simple, sophisticated listener, you can enjoy a bag of Herbaly tea 100% risk-free with their 60-day money-back guarantee. Visit bloodsugar66.com and use the promo code bloodsugar66 to get 15% off your first order. Again, that's bloodsugar66.com and then be sure to use the promo code bloodsugar66 to earn 15% off your first order. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 258th episode of The Simple Sophisticate, and we're back. I know that we had a newer ep- a new episode just a few days ago with my interview with John Van Suthen in Paris, but I taped that way back in early July, and now I'm finally in the office. I'm taping our next new episode, and I am really excited about it. Number one, we're in the middle of French week, and if you haven't already stopped by the blog, and you're a Francophile, definitely check it out because we've already posted 12 post that includes one of the podcast episodes but also the rest are travel posts beauty posts decor posts so many different things that i have had the opportunity to experience and recommend and want to recommend and share with you but also just some for example a beautiful tour of an exclusive limited time exhibit in the musée de Sai. um so if you want to escape for a moment if you're sitting at your office desk or if you are just wanting a breath of fresh air after you listen to this podcast escape to Paris and go to Musée Versailles and there's some video but mainly vo- f- photos of all sorts of different impressionist work. It, it's it's been a great week, it's been a fun week and today's episode will hopefully fit right in with that. What are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about French beauty secrets. A new book came out back in June of 2018, so it's about a year old. And I have actually heard from a handful of simply luxurious uh, life readers who have recommended this book to me up until um last month or or early this month, I had not read it yet. I did see it. I did, I think, share it in a this and that last year. Well, I read it in one day. That's how good it is. And I highly recommend you picking it up. If this wasn't an entire episode on the book, I'd be recommending it for a petit plaisir. But we're going to break this book down and I'm going to share 22 of my favorite or the ideas I'm incorporating in my life or have incorporated or will begin to incorporate into my life. But I'm just sharing 22 and there are so many more beauty secrets that they share and that are worth investing in, whether it's your time or with money. So it depends on what you're, what you're looking at trying to do. Sometimes it's just a matter of changing um, different habits we do to improve the quality of our beauty routine. So we'll get into that in a minute. This uh, week's Petit Plaisir is a film. It's a French film because we are in French week and it's a delightful film that I discovered on one of my um, plane rides. I think it was the flight to Paris that I saw this on the plane and I was like, oh yes, this is lovely. Um, So if you're a bibliophile, if you're a francophile, if you love to travel, uh, if you love a good mystery, uh, a cozy mystery, but a lighthearted mystery, that's not too cozy, just a lot of fun. um, I think you'll enjoy this beautiful film. So let's get into today's topic. 22 French beauty secrets worth the investment in either your time and or money. And I want to begin with a quote that they share in the book, and it's from Coco Chanel, whose birthday is coming up on the 19th of August. Beauty begins the moment you decide to be yourself. 
So we're going to talk a lot about, and so does the book, about actual tangible things you can do to improve the quality of your skin. Thus, the quality of your life because you're going to feel better. Um, You're going to actually feel physically better too, um, but feel more confident in your skin. But it begins by just simply being yourself. And I was recently interviewed for a new podcast that's going to be shared this month. Um, And one of the questions they asked, they said, "What, uh, what are your thoughts or what is the French beauty routine? What are some takeaways we could take away from the French beauty regimen? And it's less about makeup and it's all about taking care of your skin. So the, so the skin care component so that you don't have to use a lot of makeup because you have beautiful skin and you let that shine and you let it radiate and you just complement it with a few little extra touches of makeup for different occasions. But makeup really is secondary to skincare. And I, I, I firmly believe that it, um, it's fun. It feels good to take care of our skin, number one. And number two, you'll find the benefits as you continually do this throughout your life to pay off. So let's get into this. Each time, as um, we talk about beauty books here, um, each time I have finished reading a beauty book, and I've read a, more than a few, <laughs> and even if it's a book that I, especially if it's a book that I love about beauty and I find all sorts of advice that I'm going to welcome into my regular routine, I think there will be no need to read another book. I think, okay, I've learned everything I need to know. I'm done. (laughs) This happened actually four years ago, and I read a fantastic book called The French Solution um, by the founder of Caudalie. uh, Caudalie. And I love their products, and I learned a lot from that book, and I think it was part of a podcast, in fact. I'll provide a link to that if it was. But the truth is... As we know, as we grow older, so too does our skin and consequently our need to understand how to best take care of the skin that we have at the age that we are becomes necessary. Admittedly, when I read a book, whatever age I am, I'm going to zone in on whatever recommendations they have for my skin at that age. Sometimes I do look ahead. I will do that, but I don't take notes, copious notes on them. I focus on where I am now. What can I do now? And I will keep that book and I will use it as a resource. But as one of the points that I'm going to share today demonstrates, the beauty products start to change too in time. So the example that I'm going to share today is about toner. There was quite a while in my life during my 20s and, and my teens that I did use toner. But then I actually stopped because I didn't think the products were as good or doing what they said they were supposedly supposed to do. And and I just stopped. I simplified my routine and I took it out. But things have changed. Beauty beauty uh, products have changed. And um, different books, if you trust the author, and I do trust these authors, or this author and, and her mother and her grandmother, um, are worth looking at. So since the publication of this book, as I mentioned, was in June, two, in June 2028, um, June 2018, hello, um, Ageless Beauty, The French Way by Clemence von Muffling. You guys have brought this to my attention. Simply Luxurious Life readers have brought this book to my attention. And I did just purchase it this summer. And as I mentioned, I devoured it in one afternoon, one, one evening, actually. Um, and it's a book. It has, oh my goodness, I'm looking at it right now, 230 pages. So it's not short by any means. But again, I'm looking at what is beneficial for my age. And she breaks it up into three different age groups. So that probably cut down the reading time. But I sincerely recommend this book. Even after we go through this episode today, it's a great resource. And she, as I mentioned, has three different ages. And she recommends specific beauty products by name for every stage of aging. So she has 20, the year, the age of 20 to 35. And then she has the plenitude, which is where I am, 36 through 54. And then she has maturity, which is 55 and older. And she breaks those three up throughout consistently throughout the whole book. Now, she shares not only specific beauty routine ideas, but also offers detailed explanations so that readers can understand why they are doing what they are doing to justify the investment if there is indeed an investment that is going to be taking place with the product that you're buying if you're buying a product. And I I appreciate that because sometimes we look at a product and we think, why would I spend that much on da-da-da-da-da? And there are a few products that I now use regularly, consistently, and I know that the quality of my skin has improved because of them. Not all products have to be expensive. 
we'll talk about that. And we have talked about that, but, um, knowing why you're doing something is, is helpful. So beauty, when it comes to products for skincare and makeup are not all that she covers. She writes about food as well, exercise, carriage, so posture, as well as hair and perfume. So this is a a vast overview of all beauty for our bodies physically. So today I'd like to share with you 22 beauty secrets that caught my attention and that either I have found to be advantageous for myself or new ideas that I am now incorporating in my routine. So let's get into this. Now for everything I'm talking about here, um, the the list is all in the show notes and I will talk more about it um, in this podcast. So if you're tuning in, you're going to get the more in-depth episode, um, whereas if you go to the show notes, you're not going to get all this conversation. But the list and the links and the names of the products that I'm talking about will be listed on the show notes. The simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 258. Number one, regularly and properly hydrate your skin. A skin's quality determines the aesthetic beauty of one's exterior appearance. Quote, well hydrated skin that is dewy and glowing optimally reflects light in a flattering way that makes it look almost like silk. So this comes down to drinking water consistently and regularly throughout your day, eating foods that are that are high in hydration, so fruits and vegetables, and refraining from things that actually deplete the hydration um, in what you drink. And she, again, will outline all of these foods and ideas um, for you to think about. But then also, we're to, and we'll talk about this in detail as we go throughout today's episode, use products and use them in the right way to retain the moisture in your skin. Um, There's a few different techniques that I've recently started to do because of this book, and I have noticed a difference, and I think over time I'll notice an even bigger difference. So number one, the goal is to regularly and properly hydrate your skin. Two, pay attention to your skin. And when you do this, your attention must be a regular routine in order for you to see the differences or the difference that you are seeking. This is a quote from the author, Clemence von Muffling. One of the most important components of any French woman's beauty routine is just that. It's routine. But that's the crucial part. It's just got to be part of our everyday lives. And eventually, if those products are worth what you're investing in, they will show you the results you seek. If you couple them with eating well, sleeping well, as we'll talk about, um, keeping your skin hydrated. So that's number two. Three, this one doesn't cost a penny. Attend to proper posture. I can remember as a young girl, my dad (laughs) would constantly remind me to sit up straight. And I was tall for my age and I'm tall now, as you guys know, I'm 5'11". I know that there are many people taller than I am. Um, But at that time in a small town, I was fairly tall for, I was really tall for my class. And, um, I eventually became taller than my dad and I'm really a lot, I'm a lot taller than my mom. I love her to death. She and I have the same length of legs. Um, but we, I am four or five inches taller than her, but my dad was very adamant about me sitting up straight and it drove me crazy (laughs) when I was younger. I am thanking him now. I am thanking him now profusely. As we are growing up, our muscles are, are, are adapting. They're they're changing, they're growing, obviously. And if it becomes more comfortable for us to hunch over, it's because we haven't trained our muscles to habitually stand up straight. And so even if we are finding ourselves in, in an older age, or even if just, you know, we someone wasn't there in our lives to tell us to stand up straight, we can still change that. We can. It may feel very awkward at first, but it makes a huge difference in your carriage and your presentation and in the reflection of, of you appearing confident, whether you are or not. And that's the other thing. You may not. You may be absolutely confident, but if your stature conveys something else, um, first impressions are powerful and you've taken one thing away that you have control over. So just attend to proper posture. I do have to regularly remind myself and that doesn't involve, does not involve just rolling our shoulders back. It does involve that obviously, but it also involves strengthening our core so that our lower back is strong. So it makes it easier to sit up straight. And I am regularly reminding myself of that because it's easy to do what we shouldn't. Um, So I am constantly in the middle of reminding myself to do number three, attend to proper posture. Number four, 
Adopt a cleansing routine that properly cleans and cares for your skin. This is where I have started to change my routine after reading this book. Let me detail what she has talked about. Muffling advocates for washing your face twice. And what I mean by twice is in one, in, when one sitting. So you go in in the evening, you wash it twice, not just once. So she explains that for the first time when you wash it, you're getting rid of impurities, pollution, and makeup. She recommends for all types some kind of creamy product. The second cleansing, which happens immediately after the first, is to clean the topmost layer, which, quote, optimizes the skin's natural protection and regeneration, which primarily takes place while you are sleeping, end quote. Now, I have always washed my face before um, I go to bed at night and in the morning, and I am now changing to what she has recommended twice in the evening. I'm only still washing it once in the morning because I've only just been sleeping, but I don't, because, because I don't have my makeup on, I don't have pollution in the air. I don't need it twice in the morning, but I do need it twice at night. And so I have changed my routine and I will give you a recommendation of what I'm using. Um, But she lists a bunch of different brands that she recommends. This is important also to note The goal is not for squeaky clean skin. You don't want it so squeaky clean that you can't run your fingers down and across it without it, you know, being dry. You don't want that. That's not good. That's actually going to cause your face to react. It's going to cause it to want to produce more oil. And that's not the goal. Rather, it's about cleansing and caring for your skin so that what you put on after you cleanse it, the serums, the oils, the moisturizers will be able to properly penetrate enabling the investment you have made in these products to work as they are intended. Now, depending on your skin type, she delineates different types of cleansers. And this is all shared in chapter two. But the different types of cleansers are milk cleanser, foaming cleanser, cleansing gel, cleansing oil, micular water, and toner. Now, toner is technically not a cleanser, but she does include it there in that list to tell you what it is. You're actually going to use toner after you cleanse it twice. So I'm using a foaming cleanser from Caudalie, and it was not that expensive. I only use one pump, and I use it once a day in the evening. Then I follow by cleansing with what I have been doing, my, my micular water from Bioderma, which I love and I've been using that for almost two years now. And that's what I also use in the morning when I wake up before I apply my moisturizers. If you're curious about macular water, I wrote an entire post about it and why I use it in my beauty routine um, in 2017 is when I posted that in November 2017. So that's one I absolutely recommend. But again, consider cleansing your face twice. And consider the types of cleansers you want to use based on your skin type. And that's something she's going to help you figure out based on your skin type and age. So that's number four. Adopt a cleansing routine that properly cleans and cares for your skin. And by doing that, again, you're enabling what you eventually add to your skin, the moisturizers, the serums, and the oils to do their job. Five, apply a toner after cleansing with a cotton ball. So again, I mentioned at the top of this episode that that's the one item that for about 10 years, I have not been using a toner. For a long time, I used toner. I used, I think, Clinique's toner. And it just, after a while, I realized, what is it doing Um, And when I stopped using it? And again, this is my experience. Once I stopped using it and I adapted my routine to simplify it, my skin looked the same. It was acting the same. It was doing just fine. And I'm thinking, well, why am I spending money on toner? That's silly. So let's first talk about, as she explains, the purpose of toner. Toners have received, as she mentions, a bad rap for being unnecessary or overly harsh. Case in point, she explains that toners, when made properly, are the more modern, natural toners that are available. They use plant essences to deliver targeted ingredients deep into the skin. And the reason we do use toner after cleansing and before we apply our serums and moisturizers is to make sure that what follows will be absorbed effectively. So again, everything leading up to the moisturizers, the oils, and the serums is all to make sure that those things are able to do their job. And toner is part of that. I do use toner in the morning after my macular water, and I use my toner in the evening after my my, uh, macular water as well, after my second cleansing. What toner am I using? One of her recommendations, and she gives a lot, 
was Clarence Chamomile Toner. And it's for all types of skin. She has, uh, excuse me, Clarence has um, a toner for more oily skins, skin types and more dry stent skin types. I got one for middle of the road skin types. For me, it works very well. It is so lovely and soft and it feels so good. It's not harsh at all. There's a bit of a soft silkiness to it. I love it. I'm really happy with it. I think it costs just under $30. Um, So that's what I'm now using. So I'm adding that to my beauty routine. That's number five. Use a toner. Six, make sure your skin is pat dry after cleansing and toning and before applying any serums or moisturizers. If you want them to soak in, if you want them to do their job, that's a simple tip just to remember to do. So after cleansing, before your toner. After your toner, before your moisturizers. Make sure your skin is pat dry. Seven, start these habits, these routines early. So whatever age you are as you're listening to this podcast, hopefully you've already started a beauty routine. We're just toning it. We're just making it better, stronger, more aligned and tailored to you. I know that I got so excited when I was very young with my mom. I think I was in sixth grade, fifth grade, and she introduced for the first time moisturizers and how to care for your skin. And, um, you know, it started really young and obviously I've changed what I do since that sixth grade, but it's something that it makes a difference and it doesn't have to be super expensive stuff when you're young. It just needs to be quality items. Um, so these are just ideas to think about wherever you are in the journey. Number seven, With regards to starting early and being consistent, here is a quote to consider from the book. French women know that the earlier you start a comprehensive skincare regimen, the more youthful your skin will remain. And isn't that the goal? Number eight, find a quality moisturizer as it is essential to your skincare routine. This one's going to depend on your budget. It's going to depend on your skin type. She lists a handful that she recommends for all three different age groups. As I have shared before, two years ago, I believe it was, I started to use La Mer. And it is an investment. It is the biggest investment item in my routine, but it is, it works for me. I have seen a tremendous difference. And it really began when I moved to Bend, where it's a very arid climate. And I noticed immediately my skin just looked more tired. It wasn't as moist and hydrated. And yes, I needed to drink more water. And I've been doing that, but I still realize there's something else I need to do. And that has made all the difference for me. There are a lot of quality moisturizers out there. Find one that works for you. Number nine, apply any oils or serums before applying your moisturizers. Okay, so I saved number nine to come after number eight. Because yes, you have your moisturizer. You're all excited to put it in your skin because it's going to feel really good. But... The oils or the serums go before the moisturizer. And there has been some conflicting commentary on which should come first. But I'm going to trust this book. I'm going to trust Clements on this one. She says apply the oils and serums first after your toner, but before your moisturizer, because for the same reason the toner and the second cleansing are done, is to ensure that the moisturizers moisturizers can properly penetrate and do their job. If you put the moisturizer on first, the oil is being wasted. You're not utilizing the investment at all. And I have gone back and forth on this as far as actually trying it. And I will say as far as how it feels, again, I'm not a beautician, I'm not a scientist, but how it feels... It would make sense. But again, that's just me, the layperson. Clement says put the oil on first, then the moisturizer. I'm going to follow her. That's number nine. Number 10, consider welcoming a humidifier into your home. Living in an arid climate, for some reason, it took me four years to follow this sage recommendation. However, if you live in a tropical or humid climate, there is no need as the moisture that the humidifier provides is already done naturally in the environment in which you live. Why humidifier? Remember the goal is to regularly and adequately hydrate your skin and especially during your sleep by keeping your skin hydrated. You enable the products to not have to be asked to do more than they are capable of, but your body also retains more moisture offering that healthy glow that you are looking for. So as I mentioned, I live in Bend. It's very dry. I mean, I will wake up and my mouth will be so parched and so dry. I've never lived in a place and woke up that parched and my eyes are dry. I mean, just everything. And this is primarily in the summer. So in the winter, it's not as bad, but it can be um, because I know winters are drying, but I've noticed it's worse in the summer here for me, my experience. 
So what did I do? I went and got a humidifier. I went and got a humidifier that was highly recommended. I got one that was really quiet because I did not want to hear it. I can remember growing up having humidifiers as a kid. um, And while I slept through it, no problem. But I do remember they had a bit of a hum, a bit of a noise. Well, I went and purchased, and this is just what I've read online from consumer reports and different recommendations from sites that I trust. Um, Honeywell humidifier was the highest rated on a handful of sites. And the second rated one was Pure Enrichment Mist Air Ultrasound Cool Mist Humidifier. It's a little bit less expensive and it's smaller too. Um, But that one usually came in second to the Honeywell. And the Honeywell is the one I have. I've been using it for the last two weeks every time I use it because there's been some nights I haven't because it's rained here and it's been really nice and humid. Um, Not too humid, don't get me wrong, but just enough moisture in the air that I didn't notice I needed it. But when I do turn it on, I notice that I do not wake up as parched and and, um, the noise, I don't even realize it's on. I have to, when I walk by, I'm like, oh shoot, I need to turn it off. It's that quiet. So it's lovely. And I'll put a link to it on the show notes. So number 10 is consider welcoming a humidifier into your home. 11, apply a spritz of thermal spring water. After finishing your evening beauty cleansing and moisturizing routine, spritz a bit of thermal spring water on your face. As well, after cleansing in the morning, apply for a bit more hydration and extra dewy glow. Blot off gently any excess after letting it sit on your skin for about one minute. Now, this is an extra. This is something that will feel really good after you spritz it on. And it will take a while for you to go through um, the bottle that you will pick up based on her recommendations. They're quite large. Now, I have started to use her recommendation of Avene's Thermal Spring Water. I do just spritz it on in the evening and before I go out um, in the day after I've set my makeup or put my makeup on, it sets the makeup. This is an extra. I wouldn't, I could live without it, but I've just wanted to try it to kind of recommend it or see if it should be recommended to listeners. It does feel good and it will last a long time. So if you're looking for a little extra dewy radiance to your skin, this is something to give a try. Remember the goal is we're trying to keep our face hydrated. Apply a spritz of thermal spring water. 12 is find and use a hydrating and healing lip balm. I have searched for a long time for a lip balm that does two things. It hydrates and it heals. And third, it's used with products that are environmentally friendly. That is huge because that's not always the case and I've made mistakes with that before. She recommends using Bioderma's lip balm stick. And I picked that up because it was just under $4. It's just like a lipstick. It's shaped just like a lipstick. It goes on smoothly. It is exactly what I have been looking for. And I'm so excited that I have found it, um, especially with it being so inexpensive. I picked up two, put one in my home, one in my purse. I, I put it on throughout the day. And I also put it on just before I go to sleep at night because, as we talked about, during a dry or in a dry climate, our face, our body is going to dry out. It's going to get less hydrated. Our lips are part of that. So we need to put some lip balm on them as well. So number 12 is use and find a hydrating and healing lip balm. Now I have a few sponsors I'd like to introduce you to. They are making this episode possible and I'll be back with the remaining French beauty secrets on this list. M.M. Lafleur designs thoughtful clothing designed to make your life easier. Their collection features machine washable fabrics, adjustable hems, deep pockets, and suits that are designed to be packable. If you're someone who travels frequently, rejoice. (laughs) Founded by a former management consultant and the former head designer for Zach Posen, the collection marries function with form. Garments are designed with versatility in mind so that you can get the most use out of each piece. The company's expert stylists help you create your ideal work wardrobe, whether that means putting together a capsule of pieces to wear every day, a packing list for an upcoming business trip, or showing new ways to wear the pieces you already own. I have thoroughly been grateful for the items that I receive from M.M. Lafleur. They are functional as well as beautiful. I've mentioned this before, but I want to share it again because their design on the shirt dress that I recently purchased and have been wearing all summer and look forward to wearing in the fall when school starts is to knee length. It is comfortable. It is a button up and the button up has an extra button to make sure that that notorious gap between our breasts doesn't show. 
It is smart clothing and beautiful clothing that is affordable, washable, and will be with you for many seasons to come. As a Simple Sophisticate listener, you have the opportunity to enjoy $25 off your first purchase with a code SIMPLE. Visit mmlefleur.com slash simple. That's M-M-L-A-F-L-E-U-R.com slash simple. And use the promo code SIMPLE to enjoy $25 off your first purchase. In the Hawaiian language, the word keno means body. Culturally, the people and the earth share a symbiotic relationship with one another. That's where the idea behind keno comes from. Combine the highest quality and scientifically proven natural ingredients to provide your body everything it needs. CBD skincare is rich in vitamins A, D, and E, as well as essential fatty acids that help make your skin look plumper and more radiant. Not only does CBD help regulate excesses, it can also supply your body with what it's missing. If your body is low in antioxidants, CBD can help supply your body and skin with a boost. It can also increase blood flow by opening up blood vessels and it's anti-inflammatory. Perfect for sensitive skin and anti-aging. Using sustainable farm-to-table practices, Kino's products are unique. Certified toxic-free, cruelty-free, paraben-free, and gluten-free and vegan, their natural skincare experts have formulated products with a unique reason for each ingredient. Aloe, Almond oil, coffee seed oil, Jehovah seed oil are the natural ingredients used to stimulate collagen, moisturize, declog pores, and boost vitamin A, C, B2, and B6. Every ingredient that can be sourced organically is. Right now, Kino Skin Care is offering listeners of the Simple Sophisticate 20% off your order. Just go to Shop Kino, that's S H O P. K-I-N-O dot com and use the promo code simple at checkout. That's shopkino.com and use the promo code simple at checkout. Native, take care of your body. It's the only place you have to live. At Native, they create safe, simple, effective products that people use in the bathroom every day. They create products with trusted ingredients and trusted performance. Not convinced? Check out the 8,000 five-star reviews from their customers. Filled with ingredients found in nature, such as coconut oil, shea butter, and tapioca starch, rest assured that their products are formulated without aluminum, parabens, and talc. And it works. Don't hold back. Native can hang with you at your workout if you're a busy parent or have a 16-hour workday. Having had the opportunity to use Native, I can attest it does work and it smells good really nice. So, (laughs) and they offer something for everyone. I chose a lavender version of their native deodorant, but they also offer classic deodorant scents such as coconut and vanilla, along with limited edition seasonal scents throughout the year. Unscented formulas and baking soda-free formulas are also available for those with sensitivities. There is no risk for you to try as they offer free returns and exchanges in the United States. Subscribe and save 17%. That's right. You'll save $2 per stick and have Native conveniently delivered to your door every one, two, three, or four months. As a Simple Sophisticate listener, you have the opportunity to take 20% off your first purchase when you visit nativedeodorant.com and use promo code SOPHISTICATE during checkout. Again, that's 20% off your first order when you visit nativedeodorant.com and use the promo code SOPHISTICATE. All right, let's get back into this list of French beauty secrets. Number 13, high SPFs are indeed a good idea on on sunscreens. And consider reducing your time in the sun even when you are wearing sunscreen. Let me explain. Perhaps you have heard it as well when you share with others that you are wearing an SPF of 50 or higher. Quote, beyond such and such number, the SPF doesn't matter, end quote. First of all, they are incorrect. And second of all, it's absolutely incorrect. (laughs) Clement says so. Okay, now that I've gotten that off my chest, Mufflin explains that SPF is a measure of sunscreen's ability to prevent UVB rays from damaging the skin and can be used to approximately how many minutes you can remain in the sun without burning. So yes, wearing SPF 60, as I do, especially on my face, will save me time and money. But let's back up. What is the difference between UVA, which sunscreens do not protect against, and UVB rays, which sunscreens do protect against? Understanding the difference has motivated me to stay out of the sun as much as possible during the highest and most direct sun exposure times of the day, so about 1 to 3 o'clock. UVA rays, the long waves responsible for aging and ones that the sunscreen does not protect against, are the most harmful, and they can cause, quote, the most injury to our cells, 
because they are able to reach inside cells and damage the genetic code, impacting the cell's ability to produce good quality collagen, hydrolonic acid, and the other proteins needed for proper functioning, end quote. UVB rays are the short waves responsible for burning, redness, pigmentation, and the superficial damage that occurs immediately after sun exposure. So you can protect against that, the burns, the, the redness, when you apply it regularly. But no matter what type of sunscreen you put on, you're not protecting yourself from UVA rays, which is why she recommends staying out of the sun as much as possible, if nothing else, during the middle of the day or the hottest or highest point of the sun. So do increase the SPF of your sunscreen because when you are out there, you don't want to get red. You don't want to get burnt, but also know what it is actually protecting you against and what it is not. That's number 13. Just be aware of what SPF actually means and what sunscreens actually do. And I've listed all of that information on today's show notes. 14. Help your skin out while you are traveling, especially on the plane and refrain from drinking alcohol while in flight. Don't get me wrong. It is fun, when, especially when you're going to a very special place to have a little bit of alcohol. But if your goal is to try to hydrate your skin, drinking alcohol on the plane is just not that great of an idea. Have a glass of champagne or wine or whatever you enjoy when you get there at a fantastic bar or at the bar in your room with your special someone or on your own. But if you're trying to stay hydrated, and I have learned it both ways, I've experienced both, um, and I can attest it's definitely better to just simply drink a lot of water and, and, and liquids that help you stay hydrated. That's 14. 15. Avoid spritzing your face while traveling on a plane as it actually will dry your skin out even more. So as much as using uh, spritzes for your face when you're going about your day is a good idea, on the plane, not so much. So just something to keep in mind. 16. Moisturize your hands regularly. We often forget about our hands. Um, what I have started to do recently is have a nice uh, Leocetane lavender hand moisturizer next to my beds before I go to bed. I add that or, and when I wake up, I add that. Um, but there are a handful of different hand creams out there and just applying that regularly makes a big difference. 17, add a facial massage to your weekly beauty routine. I know, sounds silly, but it also sounds kind of nice, doesn't it? This is something you can actually do at home, and she provides the three basic techniques for massaging your face with a moisturizer you already have and use in your routine. There are pictures in the book, and the reason why she suggests doing this is that as our facial muscle muscles need to not be contracted all the time, we need to give them a massage in an effort to ask them to relax. A facial massage will actually help your muscles retain elasticity and remain firm, and it feels really good. I'm just starting to add this to my routine. I'm not consistent with it yet, but I'm definitely going to be doing it and have started to do it. That's number 17. Add a facial massage to your weekly beauty routine. You, you do not have to do it every day. 18. Visit a facialist regularly. Speaking of facial massages, whoa, don't they give the best? All right. Depending on your age, Mufflin recommends those that are 20 to 35 receive a professional facial every season, so every three months. Those that are between 36 and 55, plenitude as she calls them, every two months. And women 56 and older, every month. I have been doing a seasonal facial for quite some time. And what I appreciate about it is that so long as the esthetician is reputable, and sometimes it takes time to find one, you can keep your skin in its best shape. You can combat problems that may arise quickly and then accurately take care of them so that no more damage takes place and you can improve the quality of your everyday skincare routine as they help you answer questions and apply those um, practices at home. So 18 is to visit a facialist regularly. And I realize this is a bit of a luxury for some budgets at different periods of our lives. But this is something that I have started to make quite important in my life. Um, and I've started to now do every two months, but it, it does depend on one's budget and it does depend on the quality of your getting. So do make sure you kind of ask around, um, and get recommendations that will help. 19. Eat skin-friendly food. Sharing a long list of best foods to eat at the core of such a food regimen is eating food that is sufficient in healthy fats, low in caffeine, and low in very spicy foods, but also regularly includes citrus and offers diversity and is brilliant in color. So she shares a bunch of different foods to consider adding to your diet on a regular basis. 
So that's part of why I love this book. It's a resource. There's details. It's specific. But the foods we eat make a difference. What we put in reveals to the world what we have put in it. And and again, it's hydration, it's balance. And yes, healthy fats are good for us. Eat that avocado, cook with extra virgin olive oil, those kind of things. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Number 20, your decolletage needs extra care and attention. From cleansing to moisturizing, remember to not only tend to your face and your neck, but also the area between and just above your breasts. This includes washing, this includes moisturizing, this includes when you go to the facialist, have them do your decolletage as well. 21. Simple, very inexpensive, exercise regularly and well. And I'll provide a link to a handful of posts that I've written on this topic. Routine also comes into play with these as well. And enjoyment, and enjoyment. And last but not least is to prioritize quality sleep. There is something very powerful about getting a good night's sleep for our minds, but also our skin. Guard that time as much as you possibly can. If you're someone who travels a lot, try to figure out a way to make sure that you are getting the necessary sleep because it will show in your skin if you're not. If you're having a very busy work period in your life, and I've been there, I've done that too. I also know when, no, this is too much. I've got to take care of myself. And it really does begin with sleep. And I've saved sleep for the last one because it's free. And it's something that makes a tremendous difference, not only on our beauty routine and our our exterior, but on our peace of mind and our contentment and how we think and, and just our, our, our control of our mind. That is, that is the power of a good night's sleep. So I hope you've enjoyed these 22 French secrets to beauty. And again, this whole list is on the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com slash podcast 258. The book is called Ageless Beauty, The French Way, Secrets from Three Generations of French Beauty Editors. And Clemence von Muffling is the author, but her mother and her grandmother share their secrets along the way as well. And those are the three women that you see on the cover. And I have a feeling that many of you, even if you haven't read it, will recognize this book when you see it. Like, oh yeah, I do remember that book. I have seen it before. It's worth it. It's definitely worth uh, adding to your book collection as it is a, a fantastic resource. I'll provide links to that book as well on the show notes. Now I have a fun petite place here that I'd like to share with you and I'll be right back. This week's petite plaisir is the mystery of Henry Pick or Le Mystery Henry Pick. And it came out in 2019 and it stars Camille Cotton or Cotton, who also was in the agency, which was a series, a French series that I recommended a few months ago. She is fantastic in it. She is the daughter of Henry Pick, who has passed away. We never actually see Henry Pick. But what happens is he supposedly has written this book and they don't find it until after he dies. His family doesn't find it until after he dies. Actually, an editor that is pouring through a small town's uh, records or a, a library of unpublished work, so manuscripts that were rejected, finds it and it's by Henry Pick and the publishing house loves it. They publish it. People love it. It's a hit. And the family is receiving the royalties and they're going, doing well and things are going wonderful. But there's this book critic, Fabrice Luchini, who is skeptical. And that is where the plot begins to thicken, as they say. It is set in France, as you might imagine. And it is in French with subtitles. I would like to share with you the, the trailer. And just note that you will be hearing French, but it does have subtitles. So you, and I will put this on the show notes. So if you'd like to watch it with the subtitles, you can check it out. So here we go. Les dernières heures d'une histoire d'amour de l'énigmatique Henri Pic. Véritable triomphe littéraire. Madeleine Pic, je pose la question tout haut que beaucoup de gens se posent tout bas. Êtes-vous certaine que c'est bien votre mari qui a écrit ce roman Vous êtes en train de vous moquer de mon mari. Non mais vous l'imaginez, le pizzaïolo breton qui pond un bouquin de cette envergure mais sérieusement, toi, tu vois papa écrire ça entre deux fournées de pizza J'ignore qui a écrit ce livre, mais je vais trouver. Vous prenez pour qui Vous avez le culot de venir ici, mais ça va pas bien, vous. Pourquoi Henri Pic Pourquoi toute cette mystification J'ai besoin de vous pour aller au bout de cette enquête. Vous êtes un peu mon docteur Watson. Et pourquoi c'est vous, Sherlock Holmes bah Parce que c'est mon enquête. Si on pouvait trouver une lettre, une carte postale... Bah, J'en ai des lettres de lui. Ouais, c'est pas exactement ce dont je me souvenais. 
Peut-être que c'est en tombé sur la liste de courses de Proust. Oui, mais on a retrouvé la liste des courses de Proust et ça de la gueule. Regardez. Henri Pic a emporté son secret dans la tombe. Acceptez-le. Vous allez arrêter d'emmerder ma fille. Bah, vous allez quand même pas nous menacer avec votre binette. Non, ça c'est une serfouette. J'ai presque tout perdu avec ce bouquin. Vous êtes en train de bouleverser nos vies. C'est ce livre qui bouleverse nos vies, non Pensez pas, Joséphine. Vous savez où il habite Ah oui. Eh ben alors, il habite où Il habite la dernière maison à la pointe du... Où Infirmière Il y a un problème là. So this came out in March um, of this, this earlier this year, and it really is this coming together of the book critic and the daughter of Henry Pick and just trying to figure out, did he write this? Did he not write this? Um, because on the surface, she is kind of questioning it too. But at the same time, maybe he did and he just never talked about it. So it's a lovely story. I think you'll enjoy it. And I'll provide a link to more information about the film on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com. Podcast 258. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe. Anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Before I wrap up here today, I just want to give you a heads up as to what's going to be happening with the podcast. We actually are just wrapping up season five today with this episode. And on Monday, so the 19th of August, I will be sharing with you season six schedule. So be sure to stop by. It'll be a very short um, episode, about five, 10 minutes at the most, but it will reveal a link to the schedule for season six, which will begin the first Monday in September. So we're going to take off that last week in August as I kind of wrap up from French week and gear up for the new season and the new school year and a fantastic season for the podcast. And we will have a brand new episode of the podcast on the 2nd of September. With that said, I've also wrapped up taping the second season of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. And the first episode of season two will kick off on Saturday, September 7th. It is sure to be a good season as I've brought new, but uh, as I've brought in some inspiration for my travels in France, but also I'm going to share some everyday meals that hopefully will inspire some new and simple ways to eat well and enjoy stepping into the kitchen. So I hope you'll tune in for that. And I hope your summer is going well or your winter if you are in the Southern hemisphere. And thank you very much for tuning in today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. Be sure to stop by the blog for this week's French week. We've already shared three giveaways and we have two more giveaways to be revealed before the week is up. So all the winners will be revealed on Sunday, August 18th, but we have so many more posts to share. So be sure to stop by. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, thesimplyluxuriouslife.com, or pick up my new book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self. You can also pick up my first book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide, which is available now in paperback, ebook, and audio versions on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes, or wherever books are sold. To stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast, blog posts, my new cooking show, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your weekend, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a morning cup of coffee. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.